before I call the meeting to order, um, I'd like to say welcome to uh, all of the officials from the city and other guests. I appreciate you showing up here tonight. Um, and just a, a point of information, uh, we are the appointed commissioners who make up the Allen Park Planning and Zoning Commission. And the names you see along the front of us here, that belongs to some other folks, uh, City Council and others uh, to name. They're better looking than us. <laughs> <laughs> So with that in mind, uh, let me call our meeting to order and uh, call upon our secretary, Mr. Commissioner Babbage, to uh, with the roll call, please. Graham? Here. Messenger? Here. Hagan? Hagan? Is he? Excuse. Excuse. Uh, Perota? Here. Grant? Here. And Babbage is here. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And, uh, Let's go to the approval of the minutes for February the 6th, 2014. Motion. We have a motion on the floor to accept as printed. Second. Have a support. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none. Seeing none, they'll stand approved as printed. Let's go into new business, the rezoning of property in the new C-6C district. <coughs> now this evening we're gonna be uh, reviewing and act upon the proposed zoning text and map amendment uh, to revise Article 3 uh, district regulations uh, and the Article 4 uh, supplemental regulations to create the new uh, C-6C, the Southfield Road Mixed Use Development District. And then we're going to establish regulations for the district pertaining to permitted uses, uh, regulated uses, uh, restrictions, area, height, bulk placement, and the like, protective screening and such. Now this proposed amendment to the official zoning map will rezone the following properties currently in the RD Research and Development District to the proposed C-6C Southfield Road Mixed Use Development District. Now these some eight properties uh, which shape a triangle, as a matter of fact we're sitting in it right now, uh, are bounded by two separate railroad tracks and rails uh, and the north here of uh, Southfield Road. Uh, they are commonly known as postal addresses uh, 8000 and 8310 Enterprise Drive, also 16630 16, 650, 16, 850, 17,000, 17,100, 17,200 Southfield Roads, uh, and a few others. Uh, it's pretty much the Ford property, uh, the Roche property. Uh, we've got a gas station, the Sphinx gas station. A couple of other items just here to our uh, west, heading up north on the freeway. Ford Motor Company, if you will, and others. I want you to please note that uh, should the C6-C district be adopted, all of these properties uh, that are in place uh, will remain in compliance. Uh, the C-6C district is not directly adjacent to really any residentially zoned properties. And uh, currently the Allen Park zoning map has two uh, C6 districts. Uh, uh, you may know of both of them. One is the C6A, the Farlane Green uh, District, which is up on the hill, if you will. Uh, and also the C6B, the uh, Marketplace District, the International Marketplace, the old property that uh, had the uh, Veterans Hospital located on that triangle. Now then, additionally, during this meeting, uh, there will be a public hearing called for the purpose of receiving public comments. Then uh, the commissioners will vote on the proposal and a recommendation will be sent to the Allen Park Emergency Manager, Ms. Joyce Parker. Now, at this time, let me call upon our building department to present the proposal for rezoning. Uh, Mr. Boomer? Good evening. Um, in doing some of the historical research on the history of all the properties, um, I did include a couple of documents. Uh, you can see even back as far as 1989, there's a document from the previous uh, building owner talking about the redevelopment of this 
um, the largest portion of this particular parcel and a couple of adjacent parcels into some type of mixed use. Um, the district in its entirety started out as a medium industrial district with the largest being the Montgomery Ward's distribution center. The Ford had a couple of buildings. Uh, in 2005, uh, it was rezoned to the R&D district. The current proposal is um, somewhat of a melding of the old, uh, the existing, and some new uses that came about in some conversations. Uh, the city did employ way trim to help us in the evolution and creating of a new district. Um, they did look at our existing districts, uh, as you say, up on the hill, uh, our general uh, commercial districts, as well as the existing R&D district. Um, they did come up uh, with recommendation in conversations and concluded with uh, both the emergency manager and myself, um, some previous developers that had interest in the property. Um, we, we came up with a, a guideline uh, or a plan, as you see, for the new for the new district. Um, the new proposed district is really in line with, like I said, there's been some previous developers that talked about trying to develop property on Southfield Road. Um, as our current ordinance is written, you could not uh, put a a fast food restaurant on Southfield Road without some form of variance because it does not meet the requirements of the district. Um, like I said, in doing historical research, this is really a melding of the old, the existing, and the proposed uses that seem to be harmonious with uh, anyone that's really looked at the property as a whole. Uh, like I said, I did include a document from 1989. Um, outlining a, a very similar proposal for the whole parcel of property. So this is this is not something new, this is something that's been bannered about for roughly 25 years on this site. And that was really the reason for putting that historical document in there as well. Uh, tonight we also do have Nick from Wade Trim that could possibly expand on um, some of the exact requirements in the district. Uh, but you can see that we have broken it down similar to our other districts where there are uh, permitted uses, regulated uses, some of the, we even broke it down a little bit more than some of the other districts where we actually have some building materials that you can use, uh, which we do not have in other districts, which I think is a nice change. Some of the parking requirements are a little bit, or the signage requirements are a little bit different, although I think they're easier to read. Um, so like I said, uh, we did have more than several meetings trying to come up with a comprehensive plan that seemed to work for uh, everyone involved. It, it, we did try to keep uh, any of the rooftops uh, because the properties are boarded on the other side of the railroad tracks by some residential areas. Uh, across Southfield still is residential, although the properties immediately adjacent are zoned commercial. Um, as you can see in the proposal for some of the more industrial type uses, we actually put a 500 foot uh, clearance off of Southfield Road so they would not be abutting on Southfield Road to try to to uh, keep the property not having some type of industrial use right up on Southfield. So I don't know if Nick wants to expand on any of the thought processes uh, on top of that, but that's really historical where we got this document to where it is today. Nick, if you care to say anything, you may step forward, would you please? Just make sure that the uh, mic is on. Would you give it a quick sound check? Thank you. And do me a favor. Um, uh, Nick, uh, would, you, would you state your full name uh, and uh, who you represent for our secretary? My name is Nick Lomako, L-O-M-A-K-O. And you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Wait, Trim. Wait, Trim. Wait, Trim. So that's right. I'm a senior vice president there and a practicing planner, a consulting planner uh, with 36 years of experience. And first of all, let me just kind of echo uh, a comment that I heard earlier from uh, Dave that this truly was a collaborative effort, an effort that was, uh, has taken some time. Uh, Wade Trim really appreciated the opportunity to come and work as part of the team to uh, prepare this draft uh, before you this evening. So we want to thank you publicly for that opportunity. Thank you. The important point, I think, is that, as you indicated in your introduction, Mr. Chairman, this is, should look familiar in terms of organization. 
as you know, that we've had that fairly green in the marketplace district. And so we use that as a template, if you will, to structure this proposed mixed use development district. Uh, the second point I'd like to make is that we have a zoning map change as well as a zoning ordinance text change that supports the map change. So for the benefit of the record, uh, we should make sure that those uh, items are both included. Now, uh, we introduced this as a mixed use district because it has certain characteristics that we are trying to achieve on this uh, triangular piece of property. You'll note that if you looked at the permitted uses and regulated uses, that the uses are business oriented, uh, that they're not geared for single family detached, uh, for example, for looking for uh, business enterprises. The type of enterprises that are being proposed are urban in nature, which we believe are consistent with the, the configuration of the property and the ability to attach itself to Southfield Road, as well as its regional position in the region. Uh, we also believe that the majority of the uses are complementary and commonly associated with one another. Uh, for example, you'll see uh, overnight lodging and a movie theater. Uh, those often are associated with each other. Uh, you also see some vocational schools and some uh, kind of convenience stores uh, that often are found in combination. So that's why we call this a mixed use district because they tend to support and are commonly associated with one another. When you look at the permitted uses, one of the things that should jump out at you uh, right away is that we do not want to make the previous developments that are occupying your property uh, not conforming. And so we grandfather them in uh, by looking at the very first one. Any use that's currently allowed in the RV district uh, would be allowed to continue in this district that we create. So no one would be being harmed that way. And the historical analysis that you heard is that some properties were originally approved as industrial you'll note under regulated uses that we're allowing those uses to, to continue again and to be able to expand without going through the idea of uh, overcoming a non-conforming situation. So uh, hold harmless with one of the goals here uh, as well. Uh, the variety of uses I think are self-explanatory. A lot of them come from the 6A district. Uh, if you want to talk about the permitted uses, those are the uses that are allowed by right. Uh, once we determine that they are compliant with the definition of those uses, the next step for any of those uh, interested parties to develop any of those uses would be to seek site plan approval. The other type or class of use that we have in here is consistent with your template that you have in your zoning code. It's called regulated uses. Uh, those are types of uses that have a higher degree of scrutiny. Uh, the first question we ask as a community is whether or not those uses are appropriate where the developer intends them to locate within the district. And once that test is met, using the standards that are contained in your zoning ordinance, you are then allowed to proceed to the site plan and development aspect of that. You'll note that most of the regulated uses has to deal with light industrial and automobile uh, related uh, type of manufacturing facilities, which are consistent with some of the major land uses that you have uh, right now as well. I think that's the easy part of the ordinance. I think the more uh, interesting part of the ordinances is the idea of uh, the use restrictions or some of the standards that would be applicable to development on this uh, important and strategic piece of property in your community. And that's where a lot of discussion that we had with staff and the administration about what we should consider, what would be the minimum threshold of requirements that an applicant would have to be met. And so we, we touched on uh, the majority of the standard types of elements of site design that a developer would encounter uh, to make it easier for the developer to understand what the expectations would be in terms of the ordinance and to make sure that we have a standard that was reasonable and that would protect the other property interests of your community. So in terms of landscaping and just to kind of summarize each, if you have any particular questions that are done on any standard, I'd be glad to go back. But in landscaping, uh, is very simple. Uh, we didn't want all the site to be paved over or hardscaped uh, by a building or occupied by a building. We wanted an introduction of green on any of the development sites to make sure that it is uh, contributing to good environmental objectives as well as being more aesthetically pleasant uh, in terms of the development style. In terms of uh, building materials, uh, we want to make sure that they were uh, aesthetically appropriate and durable and that there was a certain type of uh, uh, materials that would be approved. Uh, those that would have a, a shelf life, if you will, of 10 years or more in particular. 
Uh, we're also concerned about uh, using radical theme structures of signage, high intensity colors, fluorescent colors, or building and roof forms intended to draw unnecessary attention uh, to passersby. Uh, so we didn't want to see something extraordinary in terms of design or, or color or reflection. Uh, we wanted a, a development that was uh, well conceived and that would fit into the fabric of the community that you presently have. One of the uh, larger nuisance impacts that can occur in site development is exterior lighting. We wanted to make sure that any outdoor lighting would be shielded and shaded and directed onto the property and that they'd be designed a particular way. Any freestanding you know, light structure would be a full cutoff design to prevent uh, glare uh, from being uh, cast to uh, passersby. And a cutoff structure just means that the light source itself is buried within the light fixture, so you don't see it. We spend a considerable amount of time talking about signage, uh, looking at your existing regulations, and then kind of customizing uh, your regulations from what our practice has proven to be very workable and well received by the marketplace. So we deal with wall signs and we deal with freestanding signs and we even talk about big box buildings, uh, if you will, that uh, might be considered for the property and special treatment for those to make sure that adequate signage is provided to serve the retailer, uh, but not to overwhelm the site. Uh, so we want to kind of uh, structure the proportionality of those signs. Parking and circulation. Uh, the, some of these uses that are introduced, like movie theaters and retail establishments and lodging facilities, you have to be very concerned about how, how parking is provided and oriented on the property. So we provide direction on that in terms of spacing and location and how those uh, parking lots would be divided uh, to make them more user-friendly for the patrons of those facilities. And certainly, uh, protective screening and, and use of dumpsters and how those would be enclosed are consistent with the regulations that you have in place today and we just have a friendly reminder at the bottom of those regulations as well. We then move on to say, okay, well, these are the uses we're going to have. These are the kind of site design requirements that we think are reasonable. The next question he has, what are the setback and height requirements that uh, this uh, district ought to have? Uh, that too is somewhat challenging, uh, given the character of your community and what your uh, current uh, districts have, your A and B districts. Uh, which are rather tight. For example, uh, your district right now have a 20-foot front yard setback, uh, which makes it would be very close to the road with a 20-foot front yard setback. Uh, we, we believe that that should be expanded or increased a little bit to allow a green belt in the front, perhaps a row of parking, a travel lane in front of the building, particularly useful for uh, fast food establishments. So for that reason, we suggested that your front yard setback be expanded uh, to 50 feet. Um, and keep your rear yard at, at 50 feet to mirror the front yard requirement. On one side and two side requirements that you see in your code are identical to the 6A and 6B requirements for a, a 20 foot uh, setback on each of those sides, if you will. The maximum height of structures is also important uh, in as much as we're introducing things like lodging facilities. Uh, we've capped that at four. Uh, we believe that is reasonable given the types of uh, uh, lodging facilities that are currently being built in the marketplace. And accordingly, with that four-story height, having a maximum height of structures of 50 feet. The last thing you see in your packet is what I call uh, housekeeping. There are other places in your zoning ordinance where we talk about a protective screening, and we list a series of uh, use districts where protective screening requirements have to be imposed. Uh, obviously, uh, the 6C district is a new one. And so now that uh, 6C reference is embedded in those appropriate sections of one, two, three that you see in the final sections of your draft. So uh, that's kind of it. Uh, if you look familiar, uh, some of those standings that you should feel comfortable with. If you have any particular questions, I, I'd be glad to answer them uh, when it's appropriate. Yeah, if I may, uh, can I have you just stand by just a little bit longer? Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, in place, and I'm gonna open the floor to the commissioners for any questions of weight trim. Oh, I have one, Mr. Yep. You, you, you have various enterprises there, are, and your parking, are you going to have connecting access to all the parking? Or? But yes, it's not going to be isolated. 
isolated. You know, no parking lot should be an island unto itself. When you have a large mixed-use development, uh, you should have an ability to compete. You see in here, if you have that, you're supposed to have some kind of shrubbery or something in, in there. Yeah, we, we strongly recommend that any parking lot uh, of significant size include landscaping as an element of that. You know, the landscaped island that you might have at the end of a row of parking, for right. example, uh, we believe that would improve the character of the site. Would you have a sign on Southfield on that portion of property we have? The, the signage requirements are really use dependent and to where the uses go. So, so it's hard for me to speculate on, on how a sign might I mean, be. You're not going to have a big marquee out there with a bunch of businesses. No, uh, there's no provision in the draft in front of you uh, today that would uh, permit that. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Any other questions? Yes. Mr. Messenger? Please. You do a study of the property and you come up with the best use of the property, correct? Well, we did it collaboratively. <coughs> oh, yes. Who were you working for? I'm sorry? Who do you work for? City uh, Garden Park? Yeah, city. We were hired by the city. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the owners of the property? No, we were hired by the city. I, I understand. So if the owners come in with their separate plan, they would work with you. So as far as roads and, and, and interconnecting and whether there's one exit in, one exit out, we, they, they would all have to come through here. Wouldn't have anything to do with, with this particular plan, as you just stated. Right? They, yeah, I think for, any, for clarification's sake, this is not a site plan review process. We do not have a site plan for the site. This is strictly created a zoning district. Right. So the city hired you to come up with a proposal that would entice people to come in and then go out and look for, for subs or sub buildings to come in and lease the property and utilize the property. I think that's accurate. Okay. Which way in term would not necessarily be the persons to take and ask and be looking for individuals to come in. We, we've never been asked to recruit businesses here. No, that's what okay. I mean. You're working for the city and not, you know, we're um, looking for development. That's correct, Commissioner. You're wrapping it up. You're wrapping the package up in a pretty, pretty package to. <laughs> right. We, we, we put it in a planning format because that's what we do best. Understood. Commissioner. Yes. Um, and page two that uh, okay, um, when we were talking about. Um, you know, churches and schools, mm -hmm. okay, business and colleges, and that uh, item two on page two in private. And then you went on to page, uh, what is it, um, page uh, four, you said churches and other facilities normally isn't uh, provided that. Is it for nonprofits? So if a church wanted to come in and um, you say for profit on page two, section two, and so if it's school district, um, well, it'd be the Elmo Park. They wanted to build a school there, you know, because they had more students or whatever. Or, um, you know, a private school wanted to, a charter school wanted to come in, or a um, uh, what is it? Uh, say like a new American Legion or KSC Hall or something of that sort. Would they fall in in the area of coming into this? The, if we redistrict it, that's, that's that's a great question. The the intent is to encourage business oriented taxable properties to develop on this site. And so for that reason, we indicated in that phrase you're mentioning, the, the profit motive. That, but that's in the uses of uh, permitted uses by right. But you, you know, but you say page four says churches are other, so that's why I brought it up. Right. Church, the churches are not necessarily for profit. They're, just, they're certainly not. And that's why we classify this differently than permitted. This is under the banner of regulated uses. And it would be up to the city to determine a, a church, if they were to want to locate on the property, to determine whether or not uh, their proposal was appropriate where they intend to build. That's why it's classified differently than a permitted use. Do you understand my question? I certainly do. That's a fair question. Any other questions, commissioners? Uh, yes. Commissioner? The question that I have is, um, you put the addendum of 500 feet for the warehousing? Yes. What was the warehousing set back before? Uh, well, I, I, I don't remember right off the top of my head. I think that about 1,500 feet, does that sound about correct? Uh, I, 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 more than 500 feet before, correct? Uh, 
I, I can't say for sure. I, 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 no, let's just say that it was, it's now 500 feet, right. and now it's, well, now it's 500 feet proposed. Yes. Before it was 750, 800, 1,000, something like that. I'll, I'll take your word. Okay. Now we're potentially allowing where on the whole line of warehousing to potentially line up south of the road. Is that correct? Well, we're, we believe that the 500 foot separation district would prevent that from happening. As, as <coughs> Dave indicated in his induction, perhaps you want to talk more about that? Yeah, uh, I don't believe that we had any previous setback into the district for any warehousing type. So the 500 feet actually gave us the first uh, setback that we've ever had for the warehouse. There, there are some places um, adjacent to us here where the Ford Motor property or some of the other properties are, are much closer than 500 feet to Southfield Road. Okay. And, and, and if I may, Mr. Sure, uh, Mr. On, on page four, for example, under regulated uses where we mentioned that 500 feet, we always measure that 500 feet from Southfield Road. I understand that in the regulated use, it has come back to the Planning Commission. Yes, correct. Yes. And before, I mean, way we, it is now stated, it is a permitted use. Uh, I mean, as far as the permitted use is allowed in an M1 by industrial district, mm -hmm. that has to receive approval from the planning commission. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Permitted uses, would, once the staff uh, determines that they're permitted, they right. submit a site plan, it would come to you through site plan approval practice. Right. right. And warehousing in itself would not have to because it's permitted use. As long as it's located 500 feet. Mm -hmm. Where, warehousing, uh, as long as they are 500 feet or further back from Southfield Road, they they, they can be considered permitted, right. but they still require site plan to come in front of you. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Commissioner? Where would you put a service station, a gas station, near Southfield and further back, or where it says they're permitted? Well, we have one on the site already, Commissioner. Pardon? Uh, there is a well, there sure was station one station in Southfield for yeah. years. Yeah. So it's reopened now. Is it reopened? Yes. And that that would is be that part of this. Uh, it is. Yes. In fact, that will be in compliance, or it's not in compliance right now. No, it's not. Yes. Okay. Um, through the chair. Um, Please. Uh, Mr. Groomer, um, we just have a question on the railroad track and also the utility poles. <coughs> Remember, we had to take a, the when we had over um, by um, Horger and Dasher and that, we had the problem. They had to have a certain amount of clearance because of the, um, the electrical poles that are going there. Is that within this district, or is it with the restrictions there? And this, the, the variance on each side of the, the railroad tracks? And I believe you're talking about the new ITC requirements and their expanded easement rights. Correct. Uh, it, it's, uh, the easement portion will not be granted to ITC as property. They just have the rights to come onto the property um, Although I do not believe that the city has granted all of those in this particular district. We have elsewhere in the city. I do not believe that those easement or vegetation easement rights have been granted on this property. I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think we did it on this property. We but, have elsewhere in, in the city. But you follow where I'm coming from because you said before a, a number of planning zones or board of appeals, I forget which, that, <clears throat> that it had to be um, the veg, <clears throat> excuse me, the vegetation in that um, has to take and be cut down by a certain amount of feet there, and the residents were upset because they wanted that buffer between the, you know, mm -hmm. between the buildings and that. So I was just wanting to make sure that that is, you know, in the zone, if that requirement should be in there or not in there. That's my question, really. But why is some of that restricted by the railroad uh, right away? They said the, 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 the new ITC, who's the transmission company, easement, uh, wanted to go from, I believe their existing easement is 30 or 40 feet there to 85 feet for their trimming purposes. And, um, they did come to the city uh, 
for us to sign up on easement rights, but to my knowledge, we have not done that to this point. We have elsewhere in the city, we have not done it on this particular parcel. But if we rezone this, and I'm, you know, if you rezone this, and back where the Ford Motor Company is, uh, back over by uh, Dasher and Myers and that, that area there, remember there was a certain area that you had to cut down where the, the property, they cut down the vegetation that was there, and the residents were very upset at that time. And my is, is that whole length of that, those utility poles, are they going to have that easement, or, or do we have to, they have to come before us, or what? They do not have that easement as of today. Okay, should we make this in the provision that they should have that easement or not? If, 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 I, if I may, do you, you, you don't need to do that for an easement. The, an easement is only granted uh, right by the property owner. So the property owner in this instance is who? Right now it's us. It's, it's the city, right? Yes. So anybody who wants to install a, a utility easement on that property has to come to the city and ask for permission to, to occupy that land for their particular purpose, whether it's for road purposes, whether it's for utility purposes, whether it's for any other easement right. Right, but you're missing my point. The point is it's already there, and they made the new EPA guide or new guidelines that they have to have a certain amount of area. I think it was 40, was it 40 feet or I forgot what it, what it was actually, that you had to have each side of those poles. Mm -hmm. In the center, here's the, the pole and hang it like, right. like so. Yep. And each side, the vegetation had to be cleared because they didn't want it to grow up, uh, the vegetation to grow up into the to wires. And they said that that was a nationwide um, um, thing that you had to take in half. If, if there's an existing easement in place that's not sufficiently sized and more area is needed, as you mentioned, they would still have to come in front of the city and ask for that additional easement area. When do they ever come? Okay, then back to my original. I'm sorry to be, you know, to, when do they come back to us and ask for that easement? And uh, when do they ever come back to us to ask, uh, you know, along, uh, what is it, Beatrice, Myers, Dasher, Harger, Hanover, uh, Ann, and Warwick? When do they come back and ask us for uh, something cleared up with vegetation? To be clear, they haven't come back to us. They've come to the city, uh, I'm going to say four or five times for different areas in town, different parks, uh, different parcels that were under the city's guys. Um, some of the easements we have, vegetation easements we have signed off on, um, we have not done anything, uh, to my knowledge, on the 104 acre parcel. Excuse me. If I may. David, so what you're saying is they come back to you and they ask the city for permission. It's not a mandatory governmental EPA thing that the city has to follow through on. That's correct. Okay, because I was we were let definitely when you yes. when, I, I, at the other meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that, I, I just wanted this to be in compliance. That's all I was looking for. And I thank the commissioner for that. Uh, any other uh, questions? If not, let me just take uh, a moment and I, listen, I want to thank you ever so much for coming today. Okay. Uh, I appreciate um, you going through the uh, the code of ordinances and I also appreciate uh, uh, all of the information that you provided tonight. And if I may, um, you know, when we were talking a little bit about nuisances earlier, um, and I'm pretty much uh, determined looking at the uh, permitted uses, <coughs> pardon me, uh, that we ought not to have any difficulty with any type of smoke or uh, aromas or odors uh, drifting into the neighborhood uh, or the, the rest of the district. Am I pretty much assured in that? Yes. Um, and also, um, you know, you, you talked a little bit about the excessive lighting and glare and things like that, and I really appreciate that. Um, and then, um, uh, what would there be, if any, an impact on I-94 or maybe the Southfield Road? Uh, do you see any impact with uh, uh, lighting or glare or anything in that way? Even from signage, whether it be monumental or pylon, uh, even digital signs or things like that? Uh, I, I really don't. Okay. And, and, I, and I say that from two perspectives. I, I think the ordinance is uh, a pretty good regulation. Mm -hmm. but, on, but on top of that, when the developer comes to you with development plans, whether we help review it or staff just does, 
but certainly when it appears before you, I trust the wisdom of the commission uh, to resolve those issues before they become real. Yeah, then when we look northern, uh, northern part of the parcel, um, with regard to the railroad and the right of way, uh, we don't see any determination that we're going to have any difficulty with the railroad up in that direction. I don't think the railroad has any part of this, but nevertheless, we also want to be good neighbors at all times. I don't, I don't see any conflict there. Okay, and um, uh, I think about our good neighbors in other cities and towns that oh, just have a few bumps in the road and some difficulties. And do, do you see? Uh, uh, a way that any private clubs might come into the district um, with some of the regulations that we have here. Private clubs meaning that <clears throat> uh, they may mirror some of those that we have in sister cities uh, that have been troublesome and nuisances uh, and frequent calls to police departments and things like that. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's hard to say. My, my best guess is probably not. I think you're absolutely right. Just I think your best guess is going to ring true. Yes, so thank you for that. Um, Boy, I gotta thank you for talking about landscaping. How important is that? And to have 20% of the parcel landscaped. And not only landscape, but with mature uh, evergreens and things like that. It's really gonna uh, start off in a strong way of landscaping. And I, I, I thank you for putting that into this. I'm glad you appreciate uh, it, Mr. At this time, I'd like to uh, open it up to the commissioners anymore. Question well, one more right? question. Uh, how many entrances and exits are we gonna have off South Street? It's, it's too early to tell. Uh, we, we need to see what sort of development uh, proposals are presented to us. It's good planning practice to try to minimize the number of curb cuts along Southfield Road. So it would be uh, good planning practice, if you will, that when developers approach you and they have development plans, that you try to minimize the number of driveways coming into and off of uh, Southfield Road. You want to keep Southfield Road traffic moving well and safely at a high level of service. The more curb cuts you have, the more you contravene that goal. So uh, we need to keep them to a minimum. A few years back, when we had other plans in the city, we were trying to get the state to do some work on Southfield to make it more accessible to that area. Uh -huh. And that fell through. So I'm just wondering. You know. I'm sorry that didn't work out for you. <laughs> And I have another commission. Um, with this, uh, if we, like MGM wanted to, uh, Casino wanted to, or Club Hollywood, that's in Ohio, wanted to come over here, would that, uh, would this property uh, be available for them under this redistricting? Well, well, the property is available, but, but I, I can tell you from personal knowledge that the ability to claim property for casinos are very challenging thing to do. <laughs> No, but I'm just saying, would they be able to be, right, under the redistricting yeah. of this redistricting, would they be able to come into to this area? I, I, would, I would say you probably could, uh, okay. because we have overnight mm -hmm. lodging. Uh, they might want to ask for a variance on height, mm -hmm. but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I thank you very much. You're welcome, you. sir. Are you don't, don't bring well, in uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll movies. Okay. We'll, we'll bring you back. Okay, we'll bring you back. This is a public hearing tonight, and at this time, I'd like to open up the public hearing portion of this meeting. Anybody wishing to speak, I would ask you to maybe one at a time step forward to the table here, please. This is a uh, open public hearing uh, part of this meeting. Um, please step forward. And good evening, Mr. Councilman. And would you do me a favor, um, uh, please direct all of your questions uh, to the chair. Absolutely. Good evening, um, Chairman. And then, uh, if you will, uh, would you mind stating your name once again? And Absolutely. Maybe, um, you know, you represent uh, yourself for the city. Uh, for the purpose of the secretary. Yeah. Good evening, Chairman Graham and, Com and commissioners. Appreciate you coming out tonight. My name is Bob Keenan. Just wanted to clarify for you a little bit on the ITC issue. ITC did come before the city council at least on two occasions asking for the variance for that property. I believe, and I won't be dogmatic about it because it's been a while back, but I believe we turned them down in both instances specifically because of the issue with trying to market the property and what they were asking for. And I think Dave is right. I think it was going from somewhere in the range of about 30 feet to upwards of 80, 85 feet. It was a, quite an intrusion into the complex and we thought it would be detrimental to try to market it with somebody having to purchase property and have 85 feet of it that they had to keep open for the clearance. And we, I think, and I can only speak for myself, but I think that we thought that that wasn't needed to go through and do the clearing to have that kind of variance for the 
for the way that the entrance and exit and the accessibility and what have you to get back there and do the clearing. So I don't know if that helps you guys with your decision, but I do believe that we voted twice as a city council in our term to deny that application. Yeah, thank you for your comment, Councilman. Thank you. This is a uh, public hearing. Anybody wishing to speak? 6 to C District, anybody wish to speak? Uh, seeing none and hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing portion of the meeting and come back to the table. And commissioners, I understand you have a few other questions. Mr. Commissioners, the table's open. Okay. To the chair, I guess my, my question is, number one, is this rezoning contingent upon the um, purchase agreement, proposed purchase agreement on the property? Yet my question is, if the rezoning does not take place, is a proposed purchase agreement that was in the paper, would that be null and void? Yeah, I'm going to defer to the building department on that. Okay. David, would you answer that question for me, please? Well, they really are two separate entities. They're two uh, separate? Yes. Okay. Okay, we all set on that. Uh, commissioners, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Another question. Yep. Yeah, this, this to Mr. Can we trim? Yeah, I'll allow it. <coughs> Thank you, Nick. Uh, when you discuss these different rezonings, did you uh, discuss uh, possible PUD agreement or prospective PUD, PUD agreement? Uh, we, we, our, our first uh, engagement by Ellen Park was to look at your zoning code generally okay. and to determine the best approach for the property in question today. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, PUDs and stuff were brought up as, as a vehicle that, that could be used with that. In any, any respect, uh, we encourage development agreements, uh, whether it's a PUD or a mixed use district or what have you, uh, irregardless of what the zoning is, depending upon what the property is. Since you own the property, uh, you're kind of in the driver's seat to negotiate a development agreement that works best for you. When you're discussing the um the lighting issue, did you discuss the clear, clear skies concept at all, or is that completely separate? Yeah, uh, night sky did come up uh, okay. internally among uh, the technicians, if you will, but given the character of uh, Allen Park, uh, that's not something that we thought was uh, a reasonable thing to impose okay. on developers. That's fair. Okay. Uh, and if I may, uh, Nick, while I have you standing there, thank you very much for returning to the microphone. Um, you know, I'm pretty much satisfied in some of the non-conforming uses, if you will. Uh, I don't see any used car lots or, or used watercraft boats, motor vehicles, things like that. No exotic animals, uh, no snakes and things like that coming to the property. Would you pretty much agree with that? Absolutely. Okay, and I thank you very much. Any other questions, uh, commissioners? Um, one other question that came up. Sorry about you. That's okay. When you um, discussed the different zoning districts, and um, I was looking at the adult oriented businesses such as tattoo parlors, X rated businesses. Is there any way that we can protect this property from being used for that purpose? The zoning by its nature of construction, if the use is not identified as permitted, mm -hmm. then you cannot have it in the district. So the only opportunity for a, uh, a tattoo parlor, a sexually oriented business, something like that, you'll note that under the, the last line under permitted uses uh, is something that reads something like, and those other uses that the Planning Commission approves. Okay. So somebody would have to come in front of you and say, hey, you know, I want to open a tattoo parlor, I'm just like a movie theater, or you know, and let them take your best shot. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. And thank you once again. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any other questions before we uh, end discussion? The chair will entertain a motion for a. Uh, I'll make the motion, motion to approve it. As printed. I'll second. As printed. Okay. As printed. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second, and I uh, may I add that. Um, That's going to take care of the remapping and the rezoning of the uh, parcel. Right. Okay. Okay. Also, the zoning text and map amendment will be included in the proposal. Chair, can I have one more question answered before we go for a vote? Um, I'll allow that, sure. And that would be going back to 
for some weight trimming to buy you one more time. And that's going back to the, the warehouse issue. Uh, is there any way that we could potentially omit that as far as a permitted use? Well, well, certainly you, you have the right as a community to choose what uses you want to allow in any district. I, I would discourage you from doing that. You might recall that at the very beginning of my presentation, we look at uses that are self-supporting and complementary that tend to work on each other. So it's very conceivable that you could have a, a warehousing uh, complex that needs to be there to support a manufacturing facility, as an example. Or you might have a, a series of retailers that might want to have warehousing on site uh, to, to accomplish that. So I think, I think uh, to answer your question directly, yes, you could if you wanted to eliminate that. Uh, but I wouldn't uh, recommend that you do that. And uh, the chair to the commission, mm -hmm. that anything that any business that wants to come in, they have to have a site plan. And we have to take an okay that site plan. And we can take and adjust that site plan where we want to, as long as it's under the current um, current laws. Okay? It goes to the building department and, and, and it will come to the board, the board of zone. Plan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other discussion? We we'll have a motion. We have a support. Uh, I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll for uh, voting. Okay. Um, Messenger. Yes, in its entirety. Okay. Proto. Yes, in its entirety. Um, uh, Dennis. Right. We'll come back to the commission. Okay. Um, Damage. Yes. Uh, Graham? Yes. Okay. The commissioner wish to vote? I will say no. Okay. Do we have one nay? One nay. One, two, three, four yes, and one no. Uh, the motion passes, and I want to thank uh, those in attendance this evening. The motion is to make a recommendation to the uh, emergency manager, Ms. Joyce Parker, uh, on the proposal, and uh, I want to thank those that spoke, and I also want to thank the commissioners for the question. I want to especially thank the building department and uh, the way Trim for uh, being in attendance tonight. Mr. Chairman, if point of reference, I think we also do need to vote on the rezoning of the eight parcels in question, not just upgrading the new, di new district, but uh, rezoning the eight parcels from the R&D into the new C6. If that is the wish of the department, we can do that. The current, yeah, if the current eight parcels in question. Let's have a motion on the floor to uh, rezone uh, those uh, eight some parcels that are in the uh, RD district right now to the C 6 C uh, district. We have a motion. A motion. Have a motion. Messenger support. Support. Motion support. Any discussion? Prepared to vote. Mr. Secretary, will you call the uh, roll, please? Okay. Um, Babbage, yes. Proto? Yes. Um, Grant? No. Okay. Um, Messenger? Yes. Graham? Yes. One, two, three, four. Four, yes. Oh, no. Uh, the motion is uh, supported and passed. And that concludes the uh, business of this evening. We're going to go into old business. Any old business from the commissioners? Any reports? Communications? Seeing none, hearing none? Motion to adjourn. Uh, any citizens' comments? Seeing none, hearing none, the motion to adjourn is on the table. All those in favor signify by aye and carry. Congratulations. Uh. Thank you.